So as director of the Dodd Galleries, I run our five spaces. The exhibitions range from commissioned projects from artists outside of Georgia. Um, so maybe bringing in artists from New York or LA to do projects. And um, it also can be faculty exhibitions. Um, I invite students and faculty to propose exhibitions. So I really try and encourage students to curate their own programming and make their own art scene. So at any given time, the galleries might be filled by a nationally recognized artist, um, maybe an artist coming from Atlanta, and then also student and faculty work. So I try and kind of mix all of that in. And um, I also do fundraising for the galleries. Um, I help organize exhibitions off-site. So we'll do a show in New York of graduate student work every year. Um, I teach a class once a semester. Right now I'm teaching a class called Alternative Curatorial Practices. Um, a class where I'm trying to have students rethink um, the white cube of the gallery and reconsider ways um, to present art and projects. And this job is really great for me because it allows me to work with artists to help realize and organize exhibitions, but I like being in an academic setting and I really like working with students. Well, um, you know, I'm a feminist and I was raised a feminist. I always teach a class on feminist art and usually the question I always ask is who, who here is a feminist? And when I first started teaching, maybe one person would raise their hand, maybe two people would raise their hand and then I'd say, okay, well, and I, I wanted to have like an open conversation. I didn't want to make anyone feel ashamed for not being a feminist, but I kind of wanted to get into what are the bias of thinking about being a feminist. Like, can you shave your legs and still be a feminist? Can you um, want to be, uh, you know, passive in the bedroom and still be a feminist? Like, what are the sort of rules or sort of um, misguided ideas that people have about what it means to be a feminist? And, you know, it always would come down to, well, do you believe that men and women are equal? And most of the students did for my teaching and also for my exhibition making is just making people aware because I think a lot of times the patriarchy is this um, this sort of veil or this sort of unseeable smoke that is surrounding us at all times and is terrorizing all of us men women non-binary folks everyone is um, under um, pressure and um, is, is hurt through the patriarchy and so a lot of times it's just making sure that people are aware of it. And it's kind of like, a, it's, a, it's a very traumatic thing once you do become aware of it, because you see it everywhere, right? You see um, the demoralization of women in our culture, in every single aspect of our culture. And so teaching that, um, you know, I think probably I offend some people or some people think it's, I'm too strident about it, but I think it's really, really important that when you watch television, when you look at magazines, that you see how this is framed and it's not natural that this is a given and the patriarchy has been built up in order to keep us down. In terms of my curation, you know, I often do, like every other year here, I try to do an exhibition um, that champions um, an underrecognized female artist. So we did this show with um, Rosemary Mayer, who was an artist from the 60s and 70s, who really hasn't been given a lot of um, uh, notoriety. And then we also do a catalog to go with that. We did another show this spring. And then in the next spring, I'm going to be showing um, two other women from New York who are in their 80s um, and also, you know, certainly had um, good careers, but now in this time period are not sort of being recognized for the work that they did. So it's really deeply a part of my practice. And it's something that I'm always thinking about. And it certainly um, when teaching, I want students to be aware of that. I look at different galleries online. Um, and I'll look at their roster and I'll just count how many women do they represent. And you know, sometimes they don't have any women. Um, and I feel like, you know, I'm the person in the room who maybe by, might be annoying or someone's like, oh God, here Katie goes again, you know, pointing out the patriarchy or even in the university, like when we're doing hires, I'm like, we have to hire a person of color, we have to hire a woman, sorry, white dudes, it's over for you now. <laughs> and you know, that makes a lot of, you know, I. I'll say in the last four years, I've made a lot of men angry. <laughs> and I just made a man angry the other day. I was talking to, a, um, I was talking to a, a gallery director in Atlanta. I was at a fundraising party, and he was saying that he um, hasn't been showing that many women lately, but that he's going to have a feminist show, so that's going to make up for it. And I just calmly said to him, that's great that you're doing a feminist show, but this is a practice that you need to inter integrate into every single exhibition that you do. And he just immediately looked at, looked at me and said, why are you attacking me? So I wasn't attacking him. I was very calm. Um, but the uh, amount of which 
uh, men are very threatened by a woman who has um, anything to say um, has really come to the fore for me. Um, I've made a lot of men walk away from me lately. <laughs>
there's more conversation about it, I think, sometimes. Um, and I think that uh, there's more, um, you know, a sort of stronger effort to um, correct it now. At the Dodd Galleries, because it is essentially like a laboratory, and we get to, like, history doesn't really matter here. I mean, it's different when you have a permanent collection, and we can kind of do whatever sort of ex exhibitions that we want to do, and a lot of the exhibitions just sort of come out of the brains of the students here, right? So there was a student a couple of years ago, Kalina Stasiak, a graduate student who started an all-women's wrestling league, um, and so we had wrestling downstairs. and. Um, and that was a very like sort of a feminist collective that she started and all the women um, had these sort of different archetypes that kind of played off of um, female stereotypes. It, it really is just sort of a playground for us to kind of um, play out what we're thinking about or what is, inter is interesting to us right now. I don't, I feel very lucky in this job because I don't feel like there's any kind of historical um, precedent that I have to live up to. In fact, historical precedents are what are supposed to sort of be, be like batted away and always try new things and experiment um, and see how we can push things. But I really like being here because I think everything that we're doing is educational. And so even if these students don't know who Rosemary Mayer is or is that interested in her, at least they'll know who she is now, right? And it's in an educational context, so people will know who she is. And it's sort of, um, for me, that context helps us to ask the hard questions, right? Um, you know, I'm not, many museums people are um, uh, really concerned about, um, you know, having people come in the door, right? That is, uh, although I would love more people to come over here, uh, that isn't the sort of my primary concern, right? My primary concern is to educate our audiences and get to um, the problems that maybe are issues in the art world or at the world at large. Um, and to do that through encouraging students and faculties and artists' ideas, right? I'm a producer. I'm someone who's supposed to help these people realize their ideas, not really realize. I don't have, I mean, I have ideas, but they aren't necessarily, my job is not necessarily to sort of put my ideas on the wall, but encourage other people to have ideas and to think big and be ambitious um, and to do that at the galleries and to leave having done that. A space of art education, um, I think you can really ask these hard questions um, and you don't have to cover them up and we don't have to worry about attendance and of course we have donors that we want to please, um, but part of the way that we please them is by saying that we are an educational learning gallery and um, the ways that we are educational and are learning is to ask those hard questions and to encourage students um, to consider them as well.